So now we're going to be talking about pumps and how this relates to our FE exam specifically for the water resources section. So for this question, we will start with a fundamental example, an FE type question. So don't forget to attempt the question before I do so the solution. So pause, attempt it, and see what you get. So we know that if we read the question, water is to be pumped at a flow rate of 0 0.244 cubic meter per second from reservoir A to reservoir B as shown by the figure below. So we're pumping water from reservoir A to reservoir B using our pump here. So we have a pump. And the pump is assumed to operate at 78% efficiency. So this pump is operating at 78% efficiency Ignoring minor losses, the required pump head in meters is most nearly what? So we want to find the required pump head. So let's write that as a given. So we want to find our H sub P, the required pump head. And we are also given what? We're given the flow rate. So what we're given is the flow rate Q equals... 0 0.244 meter to the third per second and we are also given the efficiency is 78 percent so this is the efficiency for the pump so i'll denote it by sub p the p letter so we know we want to find h sub p right and the way you can arrive at the answer for this is by applying the conservation of energy starting from point A to point B. So we will apply the Bernoulli equation, which is our conservation of energy equation, from the free surface at A to the free surface at B. And we're given these elevations at these specific points, at A and B. So using the Bernoulli equation, so you should have this memorized because you're going to use it so many times, that we'll start with A on the left side. We're going to have the pressure at A over gamma, plus the velocity at a squared over 2g so i'm starting at a plus the elevation at a then what's going to come in here is the required head for the pump so this is always going to go on the left side of the equation this is the before condition this is what we need before we can ultimately pump the reservoir to our new destination which is at b which is our final condition so we're going to have this on the left side of the equation. And I'll denote it in blue here. So we're going to have plus our h sub p, which is what we're trying to find. That's what we're finding here. And this should equal, now we go to point B. We're going to have the pressure, the velocity head, and the potential energy, essentially the elevation difference. So we're going to have the pressure at B divided by gamma the velocity at b squared divided by 2g plus our elevation at b now what we have to do is add the head losses so we add this at the right side of the bernoulli equation so we're going to add the head loss due to flow it's going to be our h sub l so this we know we can use the darcy equation right the darcy weisbach equation and then we're going to add the summation of the minor losses. So this might be bends or exit, contractions. So these are our minor losses. But note here, we're told in the question that we want to ignore these minor losses. So for this, we just ignore it. So we're ignoring the minor losses here. So now we know, if I rewrite this again, this H sub L is the head loss due to flow, right? So let me rewrite this as the pressure over gamma. We take the velocity at A divided by 2G plus Z sub A plus my H sub P equals to my pressure at B divided by gamma plus the velocity at B squared over 2G plus Z sub B. So I rewrote this just to write this final term here which is the Darcy Weisbach equation this is an FE handbook so I'll go to the handbook and you can go to the I believe you can go to the fluids type in Darcy and we go 
the head loss due to flow. You can always use this equation. It's the Darcy Weisbach equation for the head loss due to flow. So this is the equation we will use. And if we go back, it's going to be the friction factor. We take L over D and we have the velocity squared divided by 2G. So now we're looking from point A to point B. So we know at A, at the free water surface, what's the pressure here? The pressure is going to equal to atmospheric, right? Which is going to be zero gauge. So it's zero gauge. So this pressure is going to be zero here. So this whole term is zero. So is this, right? Because if we look at B, it's at the surface. This reservoir is open to the atmosphere. So the pressure at B is also zero gauge. So it's atmospheric pressure, which is zero gauge. So it's going to be zero as well. Now the velocity at A, we know this is standing still. The water here, it's like you can imagine a pool, a big pool. The water is obviously not moving, right? So the velocity is going to approximately be zero. So we're going to say the velocity at A is zero. And so is for B, right? It's standing still. And now the elevation here, Z sub A is what? This will be the 150. And Z sub B is going to be 200. Essentially, this is going to be measured from a datum. And they give us these elevations. Let's say our datum is at the very bottom. This is 150. If we go up, this is 200. Sorry, 200, not 250. The elevation at B is 200. So let's plug that in here. It's going to be 150 meters plus the H sub B, H sub P, which is what we want to find, equals to this Z is going to be 200 meters. Now we have the friction factor plus our friction factor. And we, are, we know the friction factor, right? The friction factor is given to be this for the pipe so 0 0.003 we take the length divided by the diameter what's the length here the length is given to be 300 and the diameter is 200 millimeters and to get two meters we have to convert it you just move the decimal place three to the left so it's going to be 0.2 meters so don't forget to do the units appropriately so it's going to be 300 meters for the length, right? And we know that diameter is 0 0.2 meters. Then we have the velocity squared divided by 2 times. We're looking at SI units, so it's 9.81 meter per second squared. So note here that we do not have this velocity, right? But we can easily find this using what equation? Q equals a v which means v equals q over a and we can solve for v we know the flow rate is given up top right so it's this 0 0.244 4 meter to the third per second so keep your units so we know we're doing everything right the area is pi d squared the diameter is 0 0.2 meters Keep it in meters squared divided by 4. So we can solve for the velocity. And the velocity you should get around 7.77. 7.77 meter per second. So we can plug that in here. So I'm just going to do an arrow like that. And this is... Actually, let me just erase this and plug it in there so it's going to be 7.77 meter per second squared and obviously just a quick tip on your fe let's say you're given the equation i be, i would just plug in the calculator and quickly plug in that velocity once you solve it on your notebook right so you don't have to have your work be neat or anything like that you're trying to be fast and efficiency with time is what's crucial here so you don't have to be neat i'm just showing the step-by-step -step process here but you can obviously plug this in the calculator if you're good with your calculator 
So now we have everything has values, right? So we can simply suffer our H sub P, which is what we want, the required pump head. This is what we want to find. So if you suffer H sub P, I would do it on the calculator. You should get around, I believe I got 63.85 meters. So let's look at this value. So this is the required head for the pump that we need and it's 63.85 meters so we know that the elevation difference here is 200 minus 150 which is 50 meters right so why are we pump why do we need more for the pump head why do we need more than 50 meters because the friction right we know we're gonna have some friction losses due to flow right so we have friction losses due to flow which obviously depends on the length and the diameter of the pipe and that's why it's going to be more than 50 meters so it's going to be around 63.85 meters for the required pump head so this will be our answer and if we go above it should be b so one last extra note i want to give you is a question for you to do and you can comment or leave a comment in the form and tell me what you get. So I want you to solve for the work. So essentially the power. What is the power required for this pump? So when we're sizing the pump, we need the power. And so I want you to approximate the power using an equation from your reference handbook. So you should know this equation, go to the reference handbook, you're going to be given everything, and I'll give you a hint here. You're going to use this efficiency, right? We know the flow rate. We know the required pump head. So you can use an equation and find the required power for the pump. This is important when we're sizing the pump. So let me know what you get, and take care.